I won. So today we're going to have a look at the second part of paraphrasing. So we finished the first bit and we covered three subtopics. So today we're going to have a look at the remaining two subtopics. Right, so just a quick recap. Remember these quick tips from paraphrasing part one. Read the given text properly. Change as many words as possible using synonyms or different word forms. For example, nouns, verbs, adverbs and adjectives can be changed. You do not have to change every word, remember? So I told you if you go to change everything, sometimes the meaning could just disappear, right? So make sure you don't need to change every word, but change as much as possible where appropriate. Change the structure of the sentences by changing the words or the word form, the clause, right? Combining or breaking sentences. Next, we're going to have a look at changing active to passive voice in this um, lesson, okay? Always start a new sentence with a capital letter. Maintain the relationships and the sequence of the sentence and the information. Let me just put a dash here. Information, right? Make sure that the original idea of the text does not change while you paraphrase. So basically what you need to remember is when you paraphrase, try to change the words and rewrite the words in your own way, right? Using your own words, but not copy the same word from the original text. And when you are paraphrasing, you need to make sure that the original meaning is not tarnished. The original meaning is there when you rewrite the paragraph. All right, so let's have a look at the next bit of the lesson. What are the tips and tools that can be used for successful paraphrasing? Well, use synonyms and antonyms as I taught you in the lesson one or part one. Change the word order or changing the clause order. Again, we did it in part one. Combine the sentences using um, conjunctions, okay? You have coordinating conjunctions, subordinating conjunctions. Then this is what we're going to do. Change active to passive and then change the word forms. That's what we're going to have a look at in part two, right? All right, so when we have a look at changing active to passive, right? As you know, we've done that grammar bit, changing active to passive. So you should know the rhythm and what it is all about. So here, we're going to just have a look at changing it from active to passive, right? We use active voice in academic writing when we want to highlight the doer. Original sentence, okay, let's see in passive voice and when you paraphrase it using active voice. Five million was spent by the owners in the development of the massive mansion. The owners spent five million in the development of the massive mansion, okay? So you know how to change active to passive by now, okay? We often use the passive voice in academic writing when we do not want to say it is our opinion, right? Right, so the important two facts is that when you're using active voice in academic writing, you want to focus on the doer. And we often use the passive voice in academic writing when we do not want to say it is our opinion, all right? So basically, even if you don't remember those two, if you can, get or change a passive voice to an active voice and paraphrase it, that's perfectly fine. That's also a method of paraphrasing, okay? So, people say that global warming is caused by the burning of fossil fuels. So when you change it, right, global warming is said to be caused by the burning of fossil fuels. So here you can see that when we change it from active to passive, right, People say that global, so we get global warming to the front, right? Global warming is said to be caused by the burning 
of fossil fuels. You don't really rewrite the word people if you can see. Okay, so we just say is said to be. All right. Okay, so if you're not sure and you want more grammar support, then please have a look at the grammar lessons where we do active to passive um, in detail. Okay, so this lesson is rather focusing on your writing skills than on your grammar skills. Okay, so that's the reason why I'm not going into detail of how you change active to passive, right? And if you feel that you need more support in it, please feel free to refer the lessons in the grammar section where we do active to passive voice. All right, so moving on, this I've again done it in the lessons where we did active to passive in the grammar part, but let me just give you a, a quick recap, okay? Um, so the tense, if it's simple present, okay, you know it's am, is, are plus the past participle. So it's is, eaten, so when you change active to passive, he eats chocolate, he, sorry, chocolate is eaten by him, okay? So when you have present perfect, you know it's has or have plus been plus the past participle. So he has eaten chocolate. Chocolate has been eaten by him. Present progressive is present continuous. And there you have am, is, are plus being plus the past participle. So in the active voice, he is eating chocolate. And when you change it to passive, Chocolate is being eaten by him. Simple past was, were plus the past participle. So he ate chocolate. Chocolate was eaten by him. Singular. Okay. If it is plural, chocolates were eaten by him. Past perfect had been plus the past participle. So chocolate had. Sorry, he had eaten chocolate. Chocolate had been eaten by him. Past progressive is the past continuous, right? So it is was, were, plus being, plus the past participle. He was eating chocolate. Chocolate was being eaten by him. Future will be um, plus the past participle, is or are going to be plus the past participle, right? So he will eat chocolate, chocolate will be eaten by him, will be eaten by him. Okay, right. So moving on, you've got all of these models which we have done more in detail, okay? The passive form follows this pattern, model B plus the past participle, okay? So present future models, um, may or may not, okay. Rami may not drink the milk. Milk may not be drunk by Rami, okay. So this is when you use models in the present and the future, okay. So the pattern is you have the model, you have the B, the model, the B plus the past participle, all right. When you have can or cannot, Shippy cannot drive the car. The car cannot be driven by Shippy. So same model B plus the past participle. Okay. Should or should not. Revati should attend dance classes. Dance classes should be attended by Revati. So again, model plus the B plus the past participle of the verb right? Ought to. Kids ought to learn alphabets. Alphabets ought to be learned by kids. Right, so it comes to the model plus the B plus the past participle. You have to attend my marriage. My marriage has to be attended by you, right? So it has to plus the B verb plus attended. Might, might not. I might not attend the college today. College might not be attended by me today. So might not be attended. Again, what you need to remember is the structure. 
the model plus the beaver plus past participle, right? I am supposed to visit the temple tomorrow. The temple is supposed to be visited by me tomorrow, right? So be supposed to, supposed to be visited, okay? Had better, had better not. I had better not eat junk food. Junk food had better not be eaten by me, right? So had better not plus be plus the past participle of the verb, right? All right, so moving on, we have more. That was with the present and the future tense. This is models used with the past tense, right? So again, when you um, write it in the passive form, right? Remember the pattern, model plus have been plus the past participle, right? Ought to, kids ought to have learned the alphabets. The alphabets ought to have been learned by kids. So again, model have been learned, okay? Should have, should not have. You shouldn't have eaten the food alone. The food shouldn't, the model have been eaten past the past participle, okay? I was supposed to attend the dance class, supposed to. So the dance class was, not were, it was. Supposed to have been attended by me. Okay. May, may not. Ria may not have written the letter. The letter may have not been written by Ria. Okay. So model have been Plus the past participle, right? So it's important that you remember the structure. If you remember the structure, you can easily change active to passive voice, but you have to remember the grammatical correct structure to do so. So remember the patterns given for you. Practice question one. Distinguish between active or passive, right? A if the sentence is active and write P if the sentence is passive. Remember to look for the BE plus the past participle structure, okay? So you have to remember what the structure is like. Which tense does it belong to? What is the structure, okay? Right, so I'm going to read one by one. In your notebooks, write down if it is A or P. A for active voice sentences, P for passive voice sentences. The shopping center was shut down by the police. They had been given the wrong clothes. Benny wishes he had been there. She might not have been listening to the lecture. So that is model verbs. You have to remember, how does it come with model verbs? Henry should not have been asked to buy books. Some chemicals can be toxic. New policies will be introduced next summer. Okay, so take a few minutes, pause the video here and write down if it is active or passive. Right, so when we have a look at the first one, right? The shopping center was shut down by the police. So when you say by, you know it is a passive voice sentence. Okay. So the first one is a clear P. Next one. They had been given the wrong clothes, okay? So let's go to the structure here. They had been given, okay? So it is the past perfect, had been plus the past participle. So again, it is a passive voice, uh, but the doer is not there, so that's fine though, right? They had been given the wrong clothes by someone, okay? Benny wishes he had been there, okay? So he had been there. Hmm. 
What do you think? Is it active or passive? Okay, you need to think about the passive voice. He had been there. Okay, does it have had been plus the past participle? Or is it a active or passive voice? So, Penny wishes he had been there is active there. Okay, active voice. She might not have been listening to the lecture. Might not have been listening to the lecture. So, model progressive. Okay. Might not have been listening, might not be attended. So it's the passive voice should have, might not be attended that form. But this does not have it. Therefore, it is active. Henry should not have been asked. Passive structure. By now you should know the structures, right? Some chemicals can be to toxic, active. The policies will be introduced, will be plus the past participle is passive. So, one is passive, two is passive, three and four both are active, passive, active, passive. Okay? How do you know if it is active or passive? You need to know the sentence structure to do so right all right look at the subject and verb to determine if it is an active or passive sentence so what do you need to do you need to look at the subject you need to look at the verb and then think okay is this an active or a passive sentence then add the appropriate verb be careful with intransitive verbs now, what are intransitive verbs? Verbs that do not have an object. They cannot be used in the passive voice. So, remember, intransitive verbs are verbs that do not have an object. And, therefore, you cannot use them in the passive voice. Let's have a look at it. So, Look at the subject and verb and think, okay, is it going to be an active one? Is it going to be a passive one? If so, what is the appropriate verb? That vehicle looks like it has never cleaned. If I were you, I would blank see a doctor. Has she blank, the verb is in form, yet about the new rule? Sadly, the proposal has blank yet. A grin blank on her face. So, I think we need the word here. Okay. So, basically the word is missing here. So, let's write a word. A grin blank on her face. So let's write down appear here. Right. All right. The next one. My friends and I blank wait for one hour where is the school van the concert blank happened right now let's go she'll be glad if our plan blank so the verb is succeeds the waitress order to clean up the mess she had made the judge ordered that smoking blank prohibit in public places his aunt blank passed away five years ago. Sam rode an airplane yesterday for the first time. The airplane which operate by Emirates. Uh, blank fly with an experienced pilot. So which, there should be a blank here actually, right? I wouldn't have complained if the steak blank undercooked. Okay, so think about the answers. Pause the video here and slowly jot down your answers. Okay, so you've got five questions here and you've got altogether 13 questions. So go through them and jot down the answers. 
Right, so let's have a look at the answers. I hope you would have completed it by now, right? That vehicle looks like it, ha it has never been cleaned. Right? If I were you, I would see a doctor. Has she been informed? Yet about the new rule. Sadly, the proposal has not been approved yet. A grin appeared. On her face. Okay. So hopefully you've jot down these points, right? And you determine by looking at the subject and the verb, should it be an active or should it be a passive voice sentence? Okay, let's have a look at the next bit. So let's have a look at the first one, which is number six on this side. So my friends and I have been Waiting for an hour. Where is the school van? The concert is happening right now. Present continuous is happening right now. Let's go. Should be glad if our plan succeeds. The waitress blank order to clean up the mess she had made. The waitress was ordered. The judge ordered that smoking prohibited in public places. So the judge ordered that smoking was prohibited. In public places. His aunt passed away. Five years ago. Sam rode an airplane which was operated by Emirates. An experienced pilot by Emirates was flown by an experienced pilot. Okay. I wouldn't have complained if the steak was not undercooked. So, hopefully, you've jot down the answers, right? And now you can understand, okay, what were should I write there? Okay, so writing the appropriate verb is really important and hopefully now you've got an idea about it. Okay, so by looking at it, you should be able to naturally, you should be able to get it and say, okay, this is what comes to the blank. Okay, the concert is happening right now. Let's go. So you know it's something happening right now, present continuous tense. So it's active, you know, you need to be able to understand while you're doing this. And if you don't, then you clearly need to go back and have a look at the active passive voice lessons. Okay. Right. So, practice question three. Change this sentence to passive voice and replace words in the sentence below with as many synonyms as possible. So, what are we trying to do? We're trying to integrate different um, methods, okay? Not just change active to passive or passive to active, but we're, what are we trying to do? We're trying to write synonyms and also make sure that we change it um, or we rather give it more skills to change it around, okay? So, research shows that increased stress can result in increased consumption of food. 
Change this sentence to active voice and replace words in the sentence below with as many synonyms as possible. Right? So think about what words can you change, right? Increase consumption, can you change that? Okay? Can you change stress? Think about the words that you can change. Remember I taught you in part one, right? Words that you can change and words that you can't change. So the words that you can change, right? Um, you can circle it or underline it, either way is fine. But make sure you clearly have a separate one to show that these are the words that you can change, these are the words that you can't change, and then by looking at that, you can rewrite it in your own words, right? So we have another sentence here. Again, change this sentence to active voice by replacing the word. So this is to change it to passive. This is to change it to active. Both weight gain and illness can be caused by processed foods with a large amount of fat and sugars, right? So think about how you can change it. Also think about changing it from active to passive and passive to active, right? All right, let's have a look at some sample answers. So increased consumption of food can be caused by increased stress. So you can kind of change this, okay? You could also use synonyms. Increased intake of food can be resulted by increased stress. Again, another way you could write it. But what have you done? You have changed this sentence to passive voice. And how do we know you've written it by and by? So we know you have changed it from active to passive. Processed foods with a large amount of fats and sugars can cause both weight gain and illness. Okay, so you can say prepackaged foods with a massive quantity of fats and sugars can result both weight gain and health problems. Okay, so you've kind of changed this into what? You've changed this into active voice. Okay, so you've changed a passive voice sentence into active voice. That's what you have done here. And then you have changed it using synonym. Same here, okay? First, you change the active to the passive here. And then you change the underlined verbs into synonyms. Second example, you change the passive into active here. And then you have put in synonyms. Clear? All right. Let's have a look at the next one. Change word forms. So you'll be having a look at changing nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and you know, different tenses. Example, development can change to develop. So economize can be changed into economy, right? So you can change the word form. Let's have a look at an example. Longer lifespans and improvements in the health of older people suggest that people over the age of 65 can continue to live full and active lives. So how are we going to change it? Longer lifespans and improvements in the health of older people are suggesting. So without saying suggest, you can say are suggesting that the people over the age of 65 can continue living full and active lives, okay? So you kind of change the word for, okay? Right, so basically you change it from a noun, verb, adjective, adverb, right? Or you can even change the tense. To analyze, change to a noun. To analyze, change to an adjective. Evaluation, change to a verb. Theoretical, change to a verb. Problem, change to an adjective. Right, so analyze is a verb. So we need to change it to a noun, right? 
So it would be analysis. Again, analyze is a verb, so we need to change it to an adjective analytical. Right, so evaluation is a noun, and when you change it to a verb, evaluate. Okay. Theoretical is an adjective and when you change it into a verb, theorize. Right, so problem is a noun and when you change it, problematic. Okay, right, so same way to expect to agree organize to prove right to prove can be changed so let's have a look at the answers um so here are the answers for questions number six seven eight nine ten because i've already done one to five with you so six expectation to disagree disorganized proof disapprove Okay, so just take and see if you've got the answers. And in case you want some support to know if it is a verb or an adjective or an adverb or a noun, right? You could always go to the Cambridge Dictionary. And type in the word, okay? so that you could see which part of speech it is. All right, so let me show you how you could have a look at it as to which part of speech it is, right? So let's take the first one, um, analyze, right? So if you go to the Cambridge Dictionary, okay, just you can type in on Google Cambridge Dictionary and it should come up, right? So once you type in Cambridge Dictionary, you can click on the first one and it will open up this page, okay? So what you need to do is type in your word, okay? And you it comes up here, right? So you need to click on that. And then if you can see here, right, it comes up, it's a verb, right? And if you click on these, you can actually listen to the pronunciation as well. So you've got the British one, you've got the American one as well, okay? So you could do it with any word that you want um, and you could also learn grammar here, right? Just for you as a guidance, it would really help you, all right? Okay, so getting back to our lesson, moving on from there, we've had a look at the answers, okay, for the remaining questions. All right, so we studied the finance and then applied for funding. So basically you had a look at what kind of things are required for you to finance this and then applied for the funding process. Okay. After blank the finance, we made a blank for funding, right? So after studying the finance requirements, it means the finance requirements, we made an application for funding, okay? So, the same way, have a look at some of the questions. We were concerned about her well-being. We had some concerns. You're changing the word form. Concerns about her well-being. The council cut funding so we could not provide free meals. Because of the council funding blank, there was no blank for meals. Okay, his research was a failure as it was too theoretical. His research, because it relied too much on what? Okay, so let's have a look at this one. The council cut funding so we could not provide free meals. Because of the council funding being cut,
funding being cut, there was no provision for free meals. His research was a failure as it was too theoretical. Okay, so his research failed. His research failed because it relied too much on theory. Okay, so moving on, as the emphasis was only on the USA, there were weaknesses in the evidence, right? So by emphasizing the USA only, the evidence was weak. All right, so moving on, practice question three. Change the form of two words in this sentence, also change the sentence structure. You could use some synonyms as well, right? The hospital management conducted an investigation to doctors over prescription of antibiotics. Many people are unhealthy because they fail to eat well and exercise. Right, so here are the two answers for it. And let's have a look at it first, right? So change the form of two words and then try to restructure your sentence, okay? So, the hospital's managers investigated the overprescription of antibiotics by doctors. The overprescription of antibiotics by doctors was investigated by the hospital's managers, right? So, what have we done first? Changed the words and then changed the sentence structure as well, okay? So, first one, you change the words. Second one, you change the structure. Okay, so in terms of the second one, many people are unhealthy because they fail to eat well and exercise. So many people have poor health without saying unhealthy, we said poor health because they are failing to eat well and not exercising enough. So you kind of change whatever is possible, then you change the sentence structure as well. Failing to eat well and not exercising are the reasons that many people have poor health. So once you put in synonyms, you can then change the sentence structure. You could even change the word form and then change the sentence structure. All right, if you needed more time um, from this, okay, you can actually pause after each question, pause. I don't need to tell you that now. You know it by now. So you can pause, do the answer and then move on. Okay. Right. Remember, now we have learned five techniques of paraphrasing and you can use a combination. You don't have to stick. Oh, I'm just going to put synonyms. I'm going to change the word form. I'm just going to change it from active to passive. You don't need to do it that way. You can have a combination of the techniques that you want, okay? When you do that, it demonstrates your vocab skills and you know how to use them differently always. So you're showing the examiner that you can paraphrase well. You know your grammar well, and you can also show that you know your vocab really well, okay? So remember to use these techniques and a mix of these techniques for the exam. Right, so let's have a look at some practice questions. Decide which paraphrase is better. Now remember, there's a note for you, remember, your essay should not just be one long paraphrase, um, even a good paraphrase. So remember, when you're doing your essay writing, you need to paraphrase it, okay, the question. You're just not going to write a whole paragraph paraphrased, right? Just writing is not good enough. You need to write something which is good, easily understood, 
um, and the original meaning is also there. So remember you need to show the examiner that you know your vocab well as well as your grammar well. Okay, so let's see. Adverbs are a major part of everyday life. When you paraphrase it, you can say advertising is an important feature of daily life. Or you could say the influence of adverbs, sorry, adverts can be felt in all aspects of our life. So it depends on how you want to change it. This is more like just putting in some synonyms. This is more changing it. Okay, and um, changing the sentence structure as well. So it's better if you could do the second one. So when you're having a look at the first one, right, the thing is, it when you say major part, it has just changed it into like an important feature. That's it. Okay. So just changing one or two words is not sufficient. Okay. It still is quite similar. But when you say the influence of adverts can be felt in all aspects of our lives, it's much, you feel that it's much more different to the original one. Why? You've used synonyms. You've changed the form of words and you've also kind of changed the sentence structure. And that is why I say the second one is much better than the first one. So you also need to try to write sentences much better, not just putting in some synonyms. Remember, when I did the first part, I was teaching you how to write synonyms, to identify the words that you can use synonyms and the words that you can't actually use any synonyms. Once you do that, now that you know all five methods, think about integrating it and changing the sentence, not changing the meaning though, right? Meaning has to remain the same as the original sentence. Next one. Adverts for the soft drink Tango have recently been banned for possibly encouraging playground bullying. So, Let's have a look at the first and the second one. Advertising for fizzy drink tango have been disallowed recently for potentially leading to school bullying. Mm, okay, playground bullying, school bullying is a bit different to that. Just put in a few synonyms again, not really good. But a ban on tango adverts has been implemented recently as some felt the content could encourage school bullies. Could encourage school bullies. Seems like, okay, they're not telling exactly school bullies, but kind of could encourage, encouraging. Okay, so quite similar. The words have changed around. Okay, you've put in synonyms. You've changed the sentence structure. So I feel the second one is much better than the first. Having a look at the next one. Opinion is divided over what impact, if any, advertising has on children. What is beyond question is that many people, parents in particular, are worried about its effects. 88% of the um, Swedes supported their government's ban on children's TV adverts in 1991. So this is taken from Willows 2009. This is a reference. While 36% of adults in the UK thought that advertising was damaging to their children, again taken from a reference. Okay. Uh, actually, for your essays, you wouldn't be writing any referencing. I'm just putting it because it's on the board and it's been extracted from those um, sources, right? So, having a look at this, we need to figure out which one is better. Is it the first one or is it the second one? Okay. So, here there is a little agreement on the effect of advertising on children, though it is undoubtedly a concern, especially for parents. Nicely written here. Okay. Nice sentence structure. Let's have a look at the paraphrase two first one. Views vary on what possible effect advertising can have on the young. What is without doubts 
is that most people, especially parents, mm. can you say this sentence structure is similar to the original one that was here? Okay. So what I feel is the second one is too similar to the first one, right? So I'd like to take paraphrase one as a better one out of the two options, okay? So I'll go with paraphrase one and I think that is better than the second one. All right, so, all right. So moving on, here's another practice question. Now, before you begin this, remember, once I read the question for you, pause the video. Do it on your own. I'll put up a sample, but there's no point in copying the sample answer unless you actually do it. Okay, so please do it on your own and then you can have a look at the answer. It's only a sample answer. It's not the only way that you can write it. Okay, so please feel free to write it on your own and then have a look at the sample and see, hmm, where can I improve? What aspects, um, what aspects are missing in my answer? Okay, right. So, paraphrase the following. For many people across Europe, the introduction of the euro has led to price rises in many everyday goods. So think about what words can you change? How can you change the word form and the sentence structure? Second one. Women have traditionally been seen as mothers and homemakers and it is only in recent years that they have been making significant inroads into the job market. There is still a long way to go before they achieve complete equality with men but the situation has definitely improved. Again, pause the video and think how could you rewrite this or these sentences using your own words and think about the five techniques we've learnt. The third one. In the 1920s, an American academic Elton Mayo researched the effects of the physical environment on the productivity of workers. The result, known as the Hawthorne Studies, named after the electrics company where it took place, showed that workers could be motivated to work harder by making small changes to the workplace, such as altering the lighting or the layout of a room. Think about how can you rewrite this idea using your own words, changing the word form, the sentence structure, right? Could you use active to passive? Think about it. The fourth one. Cystic fibrosis is the most common life-shortening inherited disease in the Caucasian population affecting one in every 2,400 live births. It is an autosomal recessive condition with a carrier rate of 1 in 25. Prevalence varies around the world and although CF is most common in the Caucasian population, it is also recognized in the Asian and African populations but at a lower frequency. So extracted from Bilton 2008 page 273. It's a direct quote from this specific source. Right, uh, written by Bilton um, <coughs> in 2008, okay. Right, so I hope you would have finished the answers by now. Let's have a look at the answers. So for the first one we have written, for the majority of the European population, the euro resulted in higher prices for many daily items. With the euro came in in prices on a range of common goods for most people. Right, so let's have a look at the answers in the first one, right? For the majority of the European population, the euro resulted in higher prices for many daily items, okay? 
So let's have a look at the answers. And the first one, for the majority of the European population, the euro resulted in higher prices for many daily items. So same meaning, right? But we've got some synonyms put in there. The second one, as women have moved into the job market, they have left behind their traditional roles as housewives and mothers and seen their situation generally improve, though equality with men is still some way off. Though not yet equal to men in the job market, women are generally in a stronger position now than in the past when they were more restricted to traditional roles in the home. So same meaning but written in a different way. Okay. The third one. This was about Elton Mayo's uh, research. Almost a hundred years ago, Elton Mayo, a US academic, studied how workers could be influenced by their environment and his report, the Hawthorne Studies, he proved that by changing mind aspects of the workplace, such as lightning, workers could be encouraged to work harder. The Hawthorne Studies undertaken by an American academic in the early 20th century investigated links between the environment and productivity and demonstrated that the latter could be increased by making small physical changes to the workplace. For example, altering a room's layout. Okay, so there are two things actually. These are the two. So this one is the first option. Okay, and then from there onwards is the second option. So you could either write either one. Okay, so they're fine. Either way is okay. And here is the fourth one, okay, about the Caucasians. So off you go, you could have a look at it and see and make sure you've got something similar. Now with that, we come to the end of the lesson of paraphrasing, okay. And I think we've completed all five techniques that I taught you about um, in the first part, I said there are five and I did three in the first one and I did the remaining two in this one, okay? Again, I would like to emphasize the importance of learning paraphrasing because when we do task one and when I do task two for writing, I'm not going to teach you how to paraphrase. I'll just be telling you paraphrase the question, okay? And then just putting up an answer for you, a sample answer. So you should be able to understand, okay, how do I paraphrase? What is paraphrasing? Okay. Paraphrasing is very important for all four skills, especially for writing. Again, you need it for speaking. And then when anyway you're doing your listening, you'll have to hear uh, for some sentences which are paraphrased, even for your reading test. So it's very important. So please make sure you pay attention to this. And if you don't understand certain grammar points like active, passive or your tenses, go back and revise those and then come and continue the writing lessons. So with that, we come to the end of the lesson, paraphrasing part two.